In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at volumes of known cross sections. This is a pretty common thing that is um, tested on the AP Calc AB test. It's generally in the free response section, and it's probably going to be like part D of one of the free response questions. So, in general, we're going to find the volume of a solid whose cross sections are perpendicular to the x axis by integrating from A to B the area of our cross section. Okay, we're going to integrate the area of our cross section. So, looking at a picture like this, y equals x squared, standard parabola here, let's say I've got a region from A to B. Okay, this region is going to be the base of my solid, and my solid is going to grow three-dimensionally up. This is going to be the base of the solid. I'm going to take cross-sections, all right, maybe a cross-section of a square or a semicircle or a right triangle, and those cross-sections will all be the same shape but different sizes based on the lengths of the curve, and we are going to integrate the area of those cross-sections. Now to better see that visually 3D here, all right, hopefully these pictures show up pretty good, I've got this y equals x squared curve, all right, and this right here, each one of the cross-sections are squares, and as you can see the sizes of the squares change, but they are uh, perpendicular to that x-axis, and the base is that region R. Okay, so this is the base, and everything is growing up off of it. Okay, if they look like semicircles, all right, you would just have a bunch of cross sections that are all semicircles, different sizes. All right, depending on how far the curve is from the x-axis. This shows rectangular cross sections, and this shows right triangle cross sections. So the cross section that I choose can be any pretty much any geometric shape that I'm able to calculate um, the area for. Okay, so that's what we're in general dealing with here. So for our first example, all right, let's say we've got a region R. The region R is the base of a solid. I put this in red because some of these key words are what you really need to focus on. It's the base of the solid, bounded by the curves y equals x squared and y equals x plus 2. For the solid, each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is an isosceles right triangle. So that's the other major part of this that you need to uh, zone in on here. Now it's asking us to find the volume. Okay, so the first thing you probably need to do is do a little sketch. Okay, so I'm going to put the y equals x squared on first. So y equals x squared. Then I'm going to put my straight line on. goes through 2. So we'll just rough estimate that slope of 1 right there. All right, so that's my y equals x plus 2. All right, so my region is the section right in here. That's the base of the solid. I'm going to be growing this off from that as my base. I'm growing my three-dimensional shape this direction. All right, and they, the cross-sections are going to be isosceles right triangles. Now, you're not going to be able to draw three-dimensionally very well what this is going to look like. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put a little representative rectangle right there, all right, because that would represent one cross-section. All right, now, three-dimensionally on this first one, let's go ahead and look at it. Okay, so here is my y equals x squared. There's my straight line. Okay, that representative rectangle right there. If I take this and I lay it down and I try to draw it laying down, the straight line here is that line right back there. The x to the second curve is this curve right here. So you can picture this laying down. This is my x-axis. This is my y-axis going back that way. This is my isosceles right triangle that I am doing as my cross sections. Okay, so note from here to here, all right, the distance of one of those legs is the distance in between the two curves. So even though you're not going to be able to take, and I wouldn't take the time to try to draw it laying down, you've got to wrap your head around the fact that when you draw it just in two dimensions laying like this, you've got to remember or recognize that this is going to be one of those legs. This is an isosceles right triangle, so this side's equal to that side. Okay, so you can find the distance between those two curves all right, by subtracting those two curves. Okay, so nice little three-dimensional picture there. All right, so you've got your sketch. All right, let's even add 
that on here. This is going to be the length of a leg. Okay, that's going to be the length of one of my legs. Okay, now, first thing I'm going to do, if I'm going to integrate the area, okay, I'm going to integrate the area. So let's write that down as a generic little formula here. I'm going to do um, volume equals, I'm going to integrate from A to B of the area of my cross-section dx. That's just going to be my general formula that I want to follow. All right, now let's start analyzing what this area formula is going to look like. Okay, so the area of an isosceles right triangle. All right, well, first of all, any triangle is one-half base times height. All right, but in an isosceles right triangle, those two legs are going to be the exact same thing. All right, so the B and the H are going to be the exact same thing. So I could say since it kind of makes sense that this would be like a height right there, let's use H. All right, so really, one-half base times height is one-half H squared. Okay, so that is going to be my formula for what I'm going to integrate. And this h distance right here is the length of one of those legs. So that's h. Okay, and I'm going to find this h. How can I find that distance right there? Well, I can subtract top curve minus bottom curve. If I pick a random number here and I plug it into the top curve, that's going to give me the entire distance. If I pick the same number and plug it into the bottom curve, that's going to give me that little tiny distance right there. So subtracting those two is what's going to give me that distance. So then I could even do a little bit more here. I would be one half times whatever my top curve is minus my bottom curve and then quantity squared. All right, so that's what I've got to integrate. Now, I also have to find my points of intersection. All right, so there would be a point of intersection. There would be a point of intersection. All right, I can find those points of intersections by setting the two curves equal to each other. So let's do that right here. Points of intersection. I'm going to abbreviate because I'm running out of room there. I go a little bit farther. There we go. All right, so I'm going to set equal x squared is equal to x plus 2. I'm going to move everything to the left and solve for x. So x squared minus x minus 2. And that should factor pretty easily for us. So we can do an x and an x, a 2 and a 1, and that'll make the negative on the 2 and the plus there. So it looks like I'm going to have an intersection point at x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. So negative 1 and 2. So now I know where I'm integrating from. I know that I've got to do 1 half top curve minus bottom curve squared because this is going to be my area formula that I'm going to integrate. So setting up this integral here, volume is equal to the integral from negative 1 to 2 and then 1 half my top curve minus my bottom curve. All right, The top curve is x plus 2 and then minus my bottom curve, so minus x squared, quantity squared, all right, and then dx. Okay, at this point, um, I'm assuming that if you are doing a problem like this, the integration should not be a problem. You could do this on a calculator. You could do this by hand. You might want to simplify it maybe a little bit, pull that one half out, integrate negative one to two, maybe rearrange those. So it looks like a polynomial curve there squared dx. All right, so at this point, you might want to pause the video and then see if you can integrate that by hand or integrate that on a calculator. If you get done, all right, you should end up with a 4.05 there for a final answer. But this is just one quick example of showing you things that you have to emphasize. All right, when you're reading these volume problems, you're going to look for the phrases, the base of a solid. You're going to look for what shape it is. All right, you're always going to be integrating the area of that shape. So focus on the shape. You're not going to be able to draw the three-dimensional picture of it laying down for this is the base. So you're going to have to visualize the distance between the two curves. All right, is going to be the distance you need because it doesn't make any difference whether this is an isosceles right triangle or whether this is a square. This is still going to be one side of that square. If I change it to a semicircle, this distance right here would be the bottom of the semicircle and it would it would be drawn 
off of it as well. So that would be the diameter of that semicircle. So the distance between the two curves is going to be the distance that you need in your area formula. So you're going to come up with your area formula, figure out how to, to deal with that. You'll come up with your points of intersection, then you'll be able to set up the integral. Definitely thanks for watching, and if you're enjoying the, video, uh, the videos, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.